Well, after installing my furring strips around the van with 1x3s and my roof rafters with 1x2s, it was time to run the electrical. Using DC wires for most of my appliances and AC wires for my 110 power, I was then ready to get my windows installed by a small shop in Salt Lake City. After some internal debate, I changed my mind from spray film insulation to then stuffing my entire van with Havelock sheep wool. In this episode, I find much more success in mounting my diesel heater and build my very own headliner shelf. Another bag of wool. Well, I ended the last vlog rather frustrated because of my diesel heater. This was my issue. I never really explained it in the last video. Is that this is this is my muffler? I almost dropped it. This is the muffler, and this is the actual exhaust port that's going to be blowing the exhaust fumes away from the van. And this is the tube that's going to be running from the heater. And hopefully, what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to cut this on just a little bit, get a nice clean cut, straighten it out, and see if this will go on nice and smooth here and see if I can get this mounted underneath the van tonight. That would be a huge win for me. If I could get this up there, I feel really, really stoked on that. I forgot to mention I made this into uh, the new shop. This is the van shop. I basically have a piece of wood here with two sawhorses and this is uh, my shop. So um, it's a little small, a bit on the messy side, but uh, it only get better from here. This is basically how I have this thing mounted. I wanted to find a spot that was kind of flat and even with the rest of the van, not have it hang down too much. They give you a bracket and everything and a self-tapping screw. So my plan is to just rip one right up through here and hopefully this will stay there. That went pretty easy actually. I put a little bit of uh, this silicone stuff that I've been using, this high temp silicone, just to act as a little kind of uh, lock tight, just another extra layer of protection, but that is super solid up there. I reinforce it even like with that rubber clamp that you see right there, I'm um, just to really take out any vibration. Like this is super, super solid. Put one more clamp right here, if you guys can see that here. So really this is not going anywhere. This feels so solid. Really, really so how this came out. This might be some of the worst filming this channel has ever seen, but I finally finished up the intake. It's about 9.15 at night, so I wanted to just maybe show you guys this. So this black one that you see coming up there is the intake, and I basically just ran it down, and it just pops off right there. Basically, the only thing you need to worry about with the intake is that it is not flat at any point. You need to leave it gradually sloped, I guess is the way to put it, because when this builds up condensation, you wanna have a spot where that water can sort of fill out. So I just made sure that it wasn't flat anywhere. Um, you don't want this to be super close to your exhaust because then you're just gonna be pulling in your exhaust fume. So I cut this uh, pretty short. And that's really the two main hoses for the heater, which is, which is pretty rad. I got both of those ran, so I'm super, super stoked on that. basically it for the night guys. I think the main winner here between tonight and last night when I got fresh aid was actually that hacksaw. That hacksaw really made it so I could get a nice clean cut and it fit right on the muffler after that. So basically all of this was solved with a simple like $13 hacksaw. Let me show you what I've been working on. I have this entire headliner area basically in pieces. I've removed all of the sun visors and stuff other than this guy. Removed kind of these B pillars here and I am basically removing the headliner. But of course there's always that one bolt that uh, just doesn't want to cooperate. And this guy right here has been super, super stripped. It was stripped when I first went in there, so I don't know if someone else tried to mess with it before, but like that's not coming out, which is kind of an issue, but I'm gonna see if I can work around it. That actually worked out a lot better than I thought, even with 
this one screw in there that kind of kept it um, held so I couldn't drop the whole thing down. It was kind of, I don't know, it worked out totally fine. It's able to fit two bats basically all the way with just four inches like I did in the other part. So I feel like I'm better at taking things apart than I am putting them back together. So the challenge is now gonna be putting everything back together and making it look like I was never up there in the first place. It is about to pour so hard here soon. I'm gonna see how long I can shoot a time lapse before my camera just gets completely soaked. Um, Cause these clouds are pretty cool, but it's definitely gonna rain here. I'd end that a little early because it's starting to really, really rain here. And I don't wanna leave the camera out in the rain, but it might be time for some rain B-roll. Oh man. my second Home Depot trip of the day here. I wasn't expecting um, to put my shelf in today, but just the way things are working out, I think it would be a good day to do it. So I'm here to pick up some birch plywood. The time has finally come where I am going to uh, cut my headliner shelf here. Now I would say this is about 80% DIY, 20% not. And the reason why I said that is, if you can see this piece of paper here, there's a company called Vancelary who essentially sells a cut out template, paper template of the size that you need. Due to the way the contour of the Sprinter van is and um, just kind of all the, the shapes to, to cut up there, a company literally made a cutout and sold it. It is way, 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 way cheaper than buying an actual shelf. I think they run for about 500 bucks if you wanna just buy a shelf up there. And it saves a ton of time in having to measure and scribe and make all these templates and stuff like that. So that's why I went with this. I figured, you know, for the time it would be worth it and hopefully, knock on wood, I can do this just in one shot with the jigsaw, zip, 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 and it will mount up there super nice. So get my jigsaw. start cutting. And the cut is done. I think it went pretty well. I, I think there's gonna be a few areas I'm gonna need to just kind of, kind of refine a little bit. For the most part, once you get a jigsaw kind of set, just put, keep like downward pressure, not even forward, just downward. That jigsaw will just, right through so i'm really really soaked on that now it's time to see if it'll actually fit so ah, fingers crossed well it's a pretty snug fit which i guess is good i might trip like in like just a little little bit like an eighth inch off because if i wrap it with fabric it's going to take up even a little more space so i think just to be safe i might just need to trim this off just ever so slightly. I realize it's about impossible to just trim about an eighth inch off of the jigsaw, especially when you're on the edge like this because the saw will just wanna jump off the board as soon as you kinda of get it in. So instead I'm just gonna do a really, really handy uh, sanding job. I'm starting with an 80 grip paper here. And just a little tip, um, you, I just got some of my scrap wood here, rip my sheets into thirds here, then you kinda of wrap it around, um, kinda of make almost like a little eraser thing and then you can just use that to get it down. So I'm gonna, it has been pouring all day long. Side note, I digress. I'm gonna rip it with some 80 first, which is really coarse to kind of get the big chunks of it down and then go back with like a 150-ish or something like that, which is a little bit more fine and really get a nice smooth. And that should, that should take care of what I needed to do for sizing it. So it should be really, really nice after this. I just fit that shelf back up in the van and it just slides in literally, I don't wanna say perfectly, but it is pretty close. It just fits super, super well. So I'm gonna clean up. Everything's a mess. I'm almost at that point where I don't even wanna clean up and I just wanna close the doors and like pretend it doesn't exist. But I guess I'm gonna clean up a little bit, 
and I'll see you guys tomorrow for a snowy Sunday. better if it would just snow or if this like 33 degree freezing rain is better because these are probably some of the toughest conditions to be outside and I'm telling you it is like 30 something degrees and like snowing just a few hundred feet up in the sky but rain down here makes for some brutal working conditions. I was going to install some of like my outside floodlights, spotlights, camping lights but I do not think it's a good idea to do when it is pouring rain like it is right now. And I feel like I've just been sitting here for the past like 12 hours, just staring outside waiting for this stuff to stop and just magically warm up. I got two of these guys and they're basically just gonna mount like up on the van like this. And I'll just drill a hole there, drill a hole here. Then you can see just your standard 12 volt DC red to red, black to black wire that'll hook up to the wires that I ran. But like I said, I don't think it's the smartest idea to drill into the side of the van right now when there's water kind of leaking in from all directions. So, kind of sucks, not gonna lie. This is the shelf. I measured it, it's about 12 inches of an opening, which is awesome. Literally by about 55 inches. So like, just look at how much space that is. That is incredible amount of space. watching another episode here um, pretty productive weekend kind of tough with the weather conditions and some of the elements but uh, we keep moving forward which is the most important part I'll see all of you guys in the next episode take it easy fam peace out from a snowy and cold Park City Whoop.